London, at the England town, in the south of England. So someone came up with a nifty idea, and he wrote with a fine pen on a piece of cellul celluloid, and he stuck that into the projector, and he said, the eagle has overshot and will land tomorrow. Right, rules and regs, we have to get these things behind us and in our memories, okay? Okay. When you hear anyone say Mayday, or if you're like me and you love Morse code, you hear dee -dee 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 -dee, listen, drop everything else, listen out for name, position, nature of the stress, and note down the time. As a radio officer at the coast station in Walters Bay, I once heard SOS. All the senior radio officers dropped everything and ran for the 500 kilohertz speaker and had pen and paper handy. And this one whippersnapper with his Motorola cell phone started laughing. He had as his ringtone. No. SOS is just, I am in danger, help me. It, uh, there is no, it's not an acronym. It's just, if you hear that, listen up, someone is in danger of dying. If someone says Mayday, Mayday has nothing to do with the 1st of May, it's French for Mayday, help me. But it's easier if you hear Mayday, to drop everything, and grab a pen, and listen. Okay? If you're at the coast, and you have a radio tune to 2102, when you hear, that's the two turn along, you drop everything, grab a pen and paper, and listen out. Okay. Distress, okay, I'm slightly off topic here. Distress signals are there for you to listen carefully, copy down correctly, and pass on. You're hard ashore. You cannot get harder ashore than Saskatchewan, which is a, tall, a tender point with me because I'm an old sailor. But you can save a life. You hear someone in distress anywhere, you note down the position. You, li you listen, you note down the position, and the, the person's uh, name, the nature of the distress, and you say, Rex, this is Ludress Radio, Romeo, 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 Mayday, if he is not English speaking, or you just say, received Mayday. And you phone 911. Okay. Radio comms required for immediate safety of life or immediate protection of property may be transmitted. And as I said before, you may use any means of radio communication if you're in distress, if your life is in danger. When are you allowed to make transmissions necessary to meet essential comms? When normal communication systems are overloaded, damaged, or disrupted. That is what, why the US government had radio hams fly out to Puerto Rico. You're allowed to use 10,000 watts in the case of an emergency. You are not allowed to otherwise. There are power restrictions, learn them. In disaster situations, nets. Most comms are handled by distress nets in specific frequencies. You've got to learn about, about that in the ARES course, A-R-E-S, Amateur Radio Emergency Services. During exercises and emergencies, 
you may handle messages from recognized public service agencies. And what has once happened on Channel 16, the Ludris area? Two Portuguese TV stations were chatting on Channel 16. And I broke in because I had more power with my coast station. And I said, Atenção! Eu sou o Bobos Barralho, silencio, mayday. The correct expression there is to say, mayday all stations, this is Ludwig's Radio, silence, mayday. Then they have to get off the air. Okay, that's the only way, that the only time that you're allowed to interfere with someone else, if you are involved with a distress situation. Otherwise, not. All right. So distress is the only situation in which the rules may be met. If someone asks you, don't charge. Okay. You may use radio comms transmitted by other uh, by stations. Only if they are ham stations. You may not ask for money. There are about five questions in those three because some of those questions they ask me down are which of the following is not true? Be aware they can be creeps. I'm not allowed to say bastards on bastards. Okay. Identify your station. You must identify at least every 30 minutes and at the beginning and at the end of the contact. So this afternoon I said Alpha Delta 4 November Tango. This is Victor Echo 5 Tango Echo November. And then we had our chat, our talk. We didn't speak enough now, but at the end we identified our stations and we signed off. Your amateur radio station is identified by your call sign, which will begin with Victor Echo 5. <coughs> Unidentified comms when you are flying a model plane. You are allowed to identify yourself in English or French, which is an interesting precedent because Leon, Victor Echo 5 Lima Whiskey Foxtrot is an Afrikaans speaking man like me. So when I call him, I say Victor Echo 5 Lima Whiskey Foxtrot. This is Victor Echo 5 Tango Echo November. Goedemiddag Leon, of gaan we naar Call signs in English or in French. Your call signs will start with Victor Alpha, Victor Echo, Victor Oscar, Victor Yankee. Normally, Victor Echo here in Saskatchewan. You might wonder, have you ever, any one of you ever seen a clock that looks like that? You will see one in my radio station. On the hour, until three minutes after the hour, this is for, naval, uh, for maritime traffic. From half an hour to three minutes past half an hour, is your silence period on 2182 Distress Channel. And that used to be quarter past, half 80 past, quarter to until 12 to the Distress Watch on 500 kilohertz Morse code started at the sinking of the Titanic. And this continued on the 1st of February 2001. Nice to know, not need to know. Victor Alpha 5, there is one Victor Alpha 5 station that I know. Delta Charlie's here. Two. He's standing there. Two. Delta Charlie Sierra. I'm Delta Charlie Sierra, he's Charlie Delta Sierra. Delta Sierra. <laughs> Sierra. Are you also Victor Alpha 5? Victor Alpha No, he is, he's Alpha, yeah. Okay, so there are two of them in, in the province that I know of. All right, so you will be a VE5 or a VA5. 
there are two places where you have to apply for permission to visit the places. Sable Island, St. Paul's Island. I once got that in an exam that I, that I posted. So uh, keep that in the back of your head. We have in Tekken 5, BC is VE7, Quebec VE2, etc. You'll get that in the book, which will arrive next week. You can also check the slide on the website. Go ahead. Are you going to wash it? Please go to wash it. <laughs> right. All this stuff, all these slides are on the website for you to peruse and memorize. Okay. If a non ham is using your station to talk to someone in Canada and a foreign station wants to talk to your friend, you must have him wait until you check that Canada has a third party agreement. If my friend Karl Heinz Stier, Zulu Sierra One Kilo Hotel, if Karl Heinz wants to talk to me while I am in someone else's station, or he wants to pass a message to me, I will not be allowed. He will not be allowed because there is no third party traffic allowed in Region 1. So, double check, always. Now this is where national security and that kind of stuff comes in. If you let an unmodified third party user station, at the control board, continuously monitor and supervise. You notice that this one overlaps with another thing a couple of slides back. Third party traffic is a message sent to a non ham via a ham station. And if a country has told the ITU that it does not want hams to communicate in its country, you're not allowed to talk to those hams at all. You're allowed to operate the equipment and the frequencies for which you are licensed. Right. That is why I want you you study very hard so that you can get that. You get 80% in the basic exam, you may operate shortwave. You're not allowed to transmit at that frequency, by the way. 15375 is a broadcast uh, frequency. The closest to that is 14.000 uh, to 14.350, that's the 20 meter band. Nice to know, that's neat to know. That's 20 meter band. Okay, you're allowed to fly radio control models in 50 to 54 megahertz, 144 to 148 megahertz, 220 megahertz band, 440 megahertz band, and up. Not allowed to use shortwave for radio control models. Hand bands, memorize. I'm not going to repeat this to you now. It's just stuff that you've got to sit down and memorize. 6 meters, 50 to 54, 2 meters, 144 to 148, 222 to 225 to 220 max band, 444 to 415 etc. And you can see where you may do what. Okay. HF band plans. The band plan is 
The third thing that's red at the bottom there is Morse code, CW. No voice is allowed on the 30 meter band. You see that? There's no blue. Bandwidth? Six meters and two meters, you are not allowed to exceed ten times that of the CW music, which is three kilohertz. So you're not allowed to exceed three zero third time kilohertz. Twin air to twin nine, the ten meter band, twenty kilohertz. And on ten to one to ten point one five you may not exceed 6 kilohertz. 10 to 1 to 10 to 1 5, that's your 30 meter band. No voice allowed. This has been not allowed. Bandwidth is the frequency band occupied by that signal 26 decibels below the maximum amplitude. This is stuff that you just got to memorize. It's dry as boom. Power restrictions, 560 watts if you have basic with honors. DC power, one kilowatt. As I said, all this stuff is just donkey work, memorization work. Illustrations and modern carriers for tests below 30 megahertz. You're not allowed to operate a repeater beneath 29.5 megahertz. Then you have frequency stability, crystal control. You must Install something that indicates or prevents overmodulation, which is distortion. You're not allowed to modulate more than 100%. That is, modulation is only up to 100%. Everything else above that is overmodulation. And you must have something that shows the frequencies. You must know exactly what frequency you're transmitting on. Technical personal remarks of relative unimportance. Regulations that you must comply to the ITU, International Telecommunication Union, and we are in Region 2, as has been said before. Remember earlier on, I said countries have different regulations, even within the same region. That question I had in my basic exam. If you're offshore of Florida, yep, you're in there in the region too, but you must know the regulations for your radio hands. Australia, Japan, Southeast Asia on region three, that's on the map. If I have to travel 300 kilometers to take your exam, I'm allowed to ask for some money for my gas. But there is no fee. The exam itself is free. There's another question that I saw in a number of exams that I love asking it. Before you put up an antenna, for which community concerns can be raised, you must consult with the land use authority and possibly the neighbors. When I told the mayor that I want to put up an antenna tower, he said, you know how high, what your height restriction is? I said, yes, 45 meters, he says. What? I said, yes, 150 feet. I said, no. I said, I got myself a printout of the bylaw, your worship. I'm allowed to put up a tower of 45 meters. 
uh, my meter, my, my tower is 6 meters high. So they can relax. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'm now to get the last couple of slides of the bone dry set part of the exam questions behind us. E EM, electromagnetic emissions. File limits. No, man, I said field. Okay. Safety guidelines for the maximum limits of radio frequency energy close to the human body is has been published by Health Canada. Safety code six gives radio frequency exposure limits for the human body. Frequencies that cause the greatest risk from radio frequency energy is the VHF band, which is third eye to 300 megahertz. Why is the limit of exposure the lowest? Because the human body absorbs RF energy the most in this range. This is, please note, all these things are just questions they ask in the exam. <coughs> the higher you get above 300 megahertz, the higher the permissible exposure levels are. Okay. Complaints. In the event of interference to the neighbor's FM receiver and steering system, if the field strength of the radio station is below 1.83 volts per meter, it will be deemed that the equipment that is affected has an immunity problem. Any device, machinery, equipment, other than radio operators, the use and function of which is or can be adversely affected by radio communications emissions is called radio sensitive equipment. Delta Uniform Hotel, as in DER. Equipment that's not included in the field strength criteria is broadcast transmitters. Amen. Okay. Lights, please. Okay. That is only my own done. Oh, oh my God. I'm so glad. But you folks need to, to memorize. You need to memorize.